I ever pay this as Roxy and I'm doing image transfers for my uh, Dollar Tree deer heads. Um, I was going to do like different like um, scenery designs behind the deer heads but when I got done with them Scrubby thought they were just kind of too nice to cover with the head because then you don't see what it is. You couldn't really see the scenery. So I went to my initial idea which was to use like buffalo check um, plaids, different kind of things like that. So here's one and I searched the world over on the internet on how to do image transfers and I've done them in the past. You know a lot of them say use Mod Podge, some say don't use Mod Podge, some say gel medium, they say don't use gel medium. There's a guy called Craftsman, if you haven't seen him, he's hilarious. I mean, he's very dry, sense of humor, but he's hilarious and he does really cool stuff. Um, he suggests Ace Hardware's polyacrylic. And I didn't really want to get into all that, and he swears by that, but you also um, have to use transfer paper. I have transfer paper, but I kind of wanted to do this easy and cheap. Um, because transfer paper isn't cheap. So <clears throat> I went to Hobby Lobby to get some gel medium because I thought, um, okay, here's the thing too. With the Mod Podge gel medium um, way is you print out your paper, you print out your image on copy paper, and then you put the Mod Podge or gel medium down, um, and then you put your image down and adhere it, let it dry, and then you got to come back with water and peel off all the paper. Where when you do that, you still have some fibers of the paper. And I thought, number one, I want it to be as clear as image as possible. Number two, my thumb is so bad, I just can't imagine me tearing off all that, or, you know, rubbing off all that paper. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I talked to this guy there. I was looking for gel medium because I thought, well, I'll just do that and then I'll make scrubby rub the paper off. So he goes, oh, no, that's not going to work. You need slippery paper. you got to have slippery paper. And I said, well, but how do you do it then? He goes, well, you just do slippery paper, and that's all he'd say. And I thought, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. It's like, wouldn't you rather sell? And he goes, we got paper over here. And I go, I said, you know what? I said, I think I'm just not going to do it because I was like, I'll just go to Michael's and get the gel medium. So then I got thinking, maybe there is a slippery paper way to do it. And so, because um, he said, you just got to print it on the slippery paper and it'll transfer. So I'm thinking like with the gel medium, with Mod Podge. So I came home and I thought instead of getting, using that transfer paper, that's really expensive. I actually won it from Mark Montano on a thing. I don't remember what he was doing, but anyways... Um, I wanted to try some other slippery paper. So I, I've got freezer paper, which is freezer paper on one side and basically a plastic coating. And my goodness, it is working perfectly. Um, I print it out. I first I cut out the freezer paper to 8.5 by 11. And then I use my little um, Dollar Tree glue sticks. You don't want anything that's going to really adhere it. You just want it adhered until you need to pull it off. And these are perfect for that. Because here's the um, freezer paper side, is like paper. And you just, you know, like make sure the edge that's going into your printer is really glued down well. Like this got bent a little bit going through, but um, this is how the top was. I didn't worry about that because it wasn't going through in the printer. And this is an inkjet printer too, by the way. I should have mentioned that. Um, so this is how it's going to come out. It looks really faded, but that's because the ink is, you know, on this plastic. So watch this magic. It's so cool. I only had a problem with one of these feeding into my printer. And I think the... I think when I looked at it, it appeared that when I um, glued down the freezer paper onto the copy paper, it almost kind of bubbled. It wasn't straight, you know what I mean? So 
I think that caused the problem. Otherwise, I haven't had any. Now you can just peel this off. And don't touch this. It's full of ink. I mean, you're going to get it everywhere. And then I'm, I'm just eyeballing this for straightness. That's the only part. Is I need a light under here. So I'm just going to eyeball it. You can kind of see through. Let it sit down there. And down. And as far as your images and, you know, printing this, I did these in the silhouette. I made ovals for these and circles for the coasters and then just inserted a pattern and printed it off. Not even with the print and cut. You just print it off on the paper. Um, another way you can do it is in Word. If you can make a circle bo text box in circles and put in your pattern or like I measured this, this um, I, I'm wider and taller than the wood because I was having issues with the scenery ones where I wasn't getting it quite right because you can't see through it very well. So make it larger, but you could also, if you're doing like this is like about four by six or something, you could just do a, um, uh, put a piece of paper on your copier and put your freezer paper and stuff in the back and print off the paper the size you need with your printer. I mean, it's you can do it a million different ways. But it is so simple. And you know me. I like the easy way out. So there's a lot of dings in this piece of wood, which I don't mind because it kind of adds, going to add to the rusticness of it and don't don't ever take a hand off this paper while you're doing this because you don't want it to move and this is about all I'm just doing a little bit of pressure and then you can look under see that it's good Right. So there that is. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I did notice I have did some coasters with red. In fact, here they are, and I'm going to redo, I'm going to do the other side. They, the red bleeds, and I think because with the scenery ones, I let them dry for about 10 hours. I glue on my finger. And I didn't have any problem with any reds. This one I did right away, and I should have waited. Because I think you just got to let that paint soak in, or ink. So I'm just going to um, redo these on the other side with something else. And because on the coasters, I'm going to glue a piece of felt on the bottom. So there it is. Now, once this is all dry, I'm going to wait a day with all these big plaid reds. I'm going to wait to um, decoupage them because once you get done, when you decoupage it, it really brings out the color a lot more. It's going to be a lot more brighter than this. So, And then I'm just going to figure out what to do with the sides. I don't know if I'm going to paint it or stain it or I don't know. But So I will be back with the finished projects.